Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video, and today we're going to be talking about Elden Ring. Bandai Namco was kind enough to provide me with early access to the game so that I could give it a look and tell you guys my opinions on it. But before we go any further into this video, I should mention this is not a traditional full-on review, and the reasoning behind that is because I don't believe I'm anywhere close to finishing the game. And there's uh, quite a few reasons as to why I'm nowhere close to finishing the game, one of them being I am savoring this game like fine wine, and I am not going to rush myself for the purpose of pumping out a review, and also because I've been recording every single moment that I've been playing in an effort to bring you guys an old school blind playthrough of Elden Ring, and I hope you guys enjoy that because that is my planned content for the next month and change at least taking into account the sheer scale of this game, at least uh, from um, my my experience so far. To give you guys an idea, like I said, I've played about 20 hours, and I've only defeated one of the major bosses, of which I'm not even exactly sure how many of them there are. Like, the game tells you, oh, there's this boss, there's that boss, there's the other one. It tells you a couple of bosses, but I have a sneaky suspicion that there's plenty more of them. Not to mention that the listing that the game gives you does not include minor bosses that you find in some of the minor dungeons, or even some of the medium-sized dungeons uh, that I've encountered throughout the world. So suffice it to say, the game is friggin' massive, and I'm enjoying every moment that I've played of it so far. Currently, I'm playing on the PC version, as that was the only version that they were able to provide me. Personally, I would prefer to play on PlayStation 5, and eventually I will do a full playthrough on PlayStation 5 as well to evaluate, you know, the differences, see how much better it is on one place or in the other one. But the impressions that I'm going to be giving you guys today are going to be based around the PC version. Furthermore, there's not going to be any spoilers of any kind in this particular video. As a matter of fact, the gameplay footage that I'm going to be showing you is going to be a of the Limgrave area, which is the area that was present during the network test. But even then, if you do not want to watch any gameplay at all and you just want to know my opinion, then feel free to minimize the window and just listen to the audio because most of the gameplay that I will be showing is just going to be, uh, you know, random B-roll because at the end of the day, this is... I'm, I'm going to be showing you guys as little as possible because I know my audience. I know that, you know, at least for most of you, this is what you guys want because you want to experience everything fresh for yourselves. And I hope that once you do, you then remember to come back and watch the uh, the blind playthrough because uh, I really did miss making those and it's been a complete pleasure. Anyway, we're going to start things off and, and dive straight into gameplay. Now, I would remind you guys that I did a video uh, a while back when the network test first came around. And that video is pretty much structured like one of my traditional reviews, even though it is not a review. And everything I've said in that video pretty much remains true for the final version of the game. So if you're looking for a more technical analysis where I go in depth about controls and, you know, how to swap the two-handed and the, the, the differences between spells and uh, incantations and all of these things that are in the game, that is going to be the video to watch because for this one I'm just going to be giving you guys uh, a little bit more context as to what the experience has been like rather than a uh, technical analysis because that's already been done and there's not really a whole lot else to talk about with the exception of one thing that was changed uh, in the character stats. And that was back in the network test when we looked at the uh, strength stat, it was supposed to affect equipment weight. They've since changed that uh, for the final version of the game. Strength no longer affects equipment weight. It's just the same thing it's always been in Souls games. It affects like how much damage your strength based weapons are going to deal and whether or not you're able to equip those weapons pretty much like dexterity, and instead your equipment weight gets sent back to endurance like it's always been in most Souls games with the exception of Dark Souls 2, I believe, if I remember correctly about the stats of Dark Souls 2, but I just wanted to make that quick correction there. I am a little bit disappointed about that particular uh, decision because I really like the idea of strength-based builds actually being able to equip heavier armor. I think it makes sense. But uh, they went back on that so that, I don't know, to allow people to make like tanky mages or something like that, if that's something that you want to do, or tanky rogue uh, characters, if that's something you want to do, which opens up the diversity of builds. But I think that, you know, that gave a bit of an edge to strength builds that was interesting. And I know that a lot of people are not going to agree with that. And 
We're not going to see eye to eye, so it doesn't matter. But I just wanted to bring that up right at the start of the video. So we're going to be diving straight into gameplay, like I said. One of the first things that I got to bring up is the sheer scale of this world is something that is going to keep blowing your mind repeatedly in the first hours that you play of the game. I mean, it is still blowing my mind. The ridiculous amount of time that I've spent on what is essentially the very first uh, traditional dungeon of the game, because for those of you that are not aware what the... Um, what kind of like the structure of Elden Ring is, the idea is there's this massive open world that you can roam in and do quests and like uh, go into smaller dungeons and whatnot. And then connected to this world, you'll find these locations that essentially, you know, they're calling like, I think, um, it was not traditional, it was typical. I, I don't know, they, it was some adjective they gave it, but it's like there are these big dungeons that are kind of like traditional Souls levels with shortcuts and all of the stuff that you would expect in, in Souls level design, right? And in the 20 hours that I've played of the game so far, I'd wager about half of them have been spent in the, what is considered like the first dungeon. Like if you guys played the network test, you could go and you could face off against the boss there and then play a little bit of that dungeon. And that is where I've spent a majority of my time. And I kid you not, it is friggin' massive. Like I did not, ex I did not expect how big it is, and, and and it's just like there's so much verticality to it because now you have a jumping button, uh, and you can't you can't ride your horse inside these dungeons. But even still, they do so much with the verticality of that place that I spent hours upon hours upon hours exploring it to find every single nook and cranny. And I can tell you right now that if you're the kind of player that that you're kind of like me, where you just like exploring every single nook and cranny of the game, I have no idea when you're going to be done with this game. Because there's a ridiculous amount of content. There, there's just a, as a matter of fact, I was actually, I was looking at the dungeons that I had done and because the game d doesn't really have one thing that like marks the dungeons off, I was like, okay, let's, uh, let's just start marking the ones that I've done so that I know which ones I've done. Cause they just, they're just on the map and you don't know which ones you've completed or not. Cause there's just so many of them. Right. And I'm still at the start of the game. <laughs> I'm still at the start of the game and I'm already getting overwhelmed by the number of dungeons that I find. Right. And what I realize is like, I'm not going to be able to mark the ones that I complete because there's like a limit of 100 markers and I might want to use them for a couple of other things. And I'm going to be spending too many markers on dungeons. So what I ended up having to do was I need to mark the ones that I haven't done yet, the ones that I've found and decided not to do yet because there's just that much content into the game. And it was mind blowing. And, and not to mention that even with all of the content that I have done, uh, if I look at where I'm at in the game, I constantly feel like I probably missed something in that area, despite the fact that I've spent hours upon hours of just like roaming in an area trying to find like every single little thing. And I look back and I'm like, I feel like I probably missed something. I, I, get, I get this idea that I think like I missed something in that area in that there's just a tremendous sense of scale. The game is big, and a lot of people are going to be quick to point out, okay, it's big, but, you know, are there things to do there, or is it just like this big, empty, open world? And here's the thing, there's there's both aspects of that uh, in the game, and I think that that's a good thing. There are some locations that, wh while I wouldn't call them empty, there are some locations that just exist for the sake of existing to give the, the world almost like a sense of, of a believable location. Because, like, if you go out into the real world, right, there, there's not, like, parties or or just, like, random activities happening everywhere you go. Like, if you go to, into the middle of a, of, of a farmland, chances are there's nothing there. There might be, like, a couple of cows or something. That's it. And it's, like, in Elden Ring, there are areas that are like that. There's also plenty of areas that, that there are other things that you can do. Like, to give you an idea, it's, like, Elden Ring has a lot of uh, events that are also based around the time of day. Like, I, I, I told you guys this in my other video. How about, oh, I ran into this dark knight riding, like, this funeral steed uh, because it was at night. And this knight was, just, like, patrolling this area, but it was at nighttime he would spawn. And so uh, there was an area that I was in, and I knew that there was an NPC there that sold Ashes of War. So I go to this area because I wanted to consult with him, see if there were like an Ash of War that I would want to buy because I was trying out new weapons and whatnot. 
And as I arrived at the area, it was nighttime. And I didn't, I didn't really pay much attention to it. And so it's nighttime. I sit at, at, my, at the, the side of Grace, which is kind of like the bonfire of Elden Ring. And as I get up, the NPC is no longer there. And I'm just like, what the hell is going on? So I go inside the little house where the NPC is, and a friggin' red boss fight spawns, like, right there. And I'm just like, what? Just kills me? And then, like, I respawn, and everything's back to normal. And I'm just like, what the hell just happened? And that is one of the things that, you know, just one of the, one of the tiny little events that will happen from time to time that keeps the world feeling alive. Like you'll be going to places and different things take place. There's also the traditional storytelling that you kind of get from a Souls game where it's like, you know, you see NPCs, NPCs tell you about themselves and their objectives, and then you go and you might potentially do something for the NPC and then the situation evolves. And sometimes it doesn't always evolve the way that you would like, right? That type of storytelling is still there. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys too much about the story because obviously spoiler reasons, not to mention that even if I wanted to tell you with the way that Miyazaki tells stories, it's uh, it's it's kind of confusing. Like I have a, a lot of theories about where things might go, but like I said, at this point, it's still just like all is in the wind. I'm still like trying to trying to take into account the experience that I have from previous Souls games and trying to determine whether or not the events that are taking place in this world are actually taking place in the way that the NPCs are telling them, or if it's something altogether different that is actually happening, because that's, that's kind of like the way that Miyazaki's team from Software uh, does their video games, which is extremely interesting. Even with, you know, because you might think, oh, with the, you know, the... Um, G.R.R. Martin um, writing the lore for it, this is going to be much more streamlined experience. And there's, I feel like there's a lot more dialogue and there's a lot more interacting with characters, but the storytelling, the way in which the story is told is pretty much faithful to the way that you are used to experiencing stories in uh, Elden Ring. But uh, just that was just a little detour uh, telling you guys about the, the story. It's like, when it comes to the stuff that you can do in this open world, still going back to the whole thing, but is the open world empty? Is there stuff to do? There's plenty of stuff to do. As a matter of fact, I would say that there is heavy inspiration in Breath of the Wild. This does feel like, you know, how should I put this in, in, in like one of those um, games journalist quotes? It's the Breath of the Wild of Dark Souls. It's the Dark Souls of Breath of the Wild. Something like that. There, there's some obvious inspiration. You guys are like, oh, are you really going to make that comparison? Yes, I am. Because I played a ton of Breath of the Wild and I see a lot of the things kind of like being inspired from it. Even like little things like you run into something and then you start seeing little footprints that you can follow to go into something else, which was something that you definitely did in Breath of the Wild. And, and there's more things. I don't want to like list out every little example. Just know that you will definitely feel, if you've played Breath of the Wild, you'll definitely feel some inspiration there. And I think that's a good thing. I know that for some players, they're going to be like, oh, they're copying, they're going mainstream. And it's like, they ain't going mainstream. There's also a lot of people that are like, it's just big Dark Souls. And like, I get it. I get it. Um, if, if that is something that bothers you, then maybe the game is not for you. It is big Dark Souls, but it is also so much more. It is... Uh, you know, cause you don't, just because you get big Dark Souls, you don't get necessarily a mount. An amount is integrated in the way where I've actually had to use it during certain boss fights to deal with certain mechanics that the boss, th boss throws at you. So I'd actually advise you guys to get used to mounting the horse uh, on, on a dime. Like, get used to real, like, bind that in a way where it makes sense for you. The way that I'm doing it is, like, there's a, an alternate menu that you can hold down a uh, triangle to, to spawn a, a, an alternate menu. And I use that to summon the horse. So I would advise you guys to really like get used to that because that is going to be something that you will have to deal with. Uh, but besides all of those little events that I'm talking about, you'll encounter like interesting things. You might encounter like someone who's been imprisoned in a dungeon or something. You might encounter like these little ruined areas that usually have underground sections that you go into. And when you go into these underground sections, you might find like treasures and stuff like that. And uh, you also might find these weird chests that they don't look any different, they look just like a regular chest, and then you open them, and shwoop, 
the chest just like swallows you up and takes you to a completely different area of the world. And that has like a sense of magic in and of its own because the world is just so big, right? That you might feel like, okay, I want to go in this, in this way and I want to make sure that I follow this path and do this kind of like, I was going to say quest because there's no like quest. There's not going to be a quest marker like you have on other open world games. They don't do that. If you're expecting that to happen, that's not a thing. It's like you're supposed to remember what some of the NPCs told you and that is going to be like your quests. They're, they don't have like a quest system where you go somewhere. It's like, oh, quest complete. No, that doesn't happen, right? And so you might be thinking, oh, I want to go to this area and do this thing. And you might run into one of these chests that I'm talking about and teleports you somewhere else. And it just adds like an element of chaos to your playthrough that I think is amazing. And initially, the first time that I got whisked away, I was like, oh, my God, I, got, I have, have however many um, runes I had at the time. And I was like, oh, I'm going to lose all of these because I, I've been teleported here and these enemies are actually a little bit tougher than I expected. And oh, I'm, But at the same time, it was exciting because like, oh, I'm in, this is crazy. Like I'm in this higher level area and I, I'm being given access to higher level materials that I can't even use yet, like upgrade materials for my weapons that I can't even use yet. But you know, that I don't know, there's just something about it that initially I was like, mm, I'm not sure how I feel about this. And then eventually I got addicted to it. Like, I want to find all of these things that like just teleport you to random spots because it's cool. It's just a really cool aspect of adding a little bit of chaos to the stuff that you are doing. Besides that, there are some activities that are very much like open world. Like I've, I've explained, there's these smaller dungeons that I talked about in previous videos where you just go in and it's kind of like, you know, it's not like a chalice dungeon or anything. It's much, much smaller than a chalice dungeon. But you go in and there's like maybe a little bit of a puzzle element to it. And once you solve the puzzle, you get to go face a boss. Usually the boss will give you like an interesting reward. These are, from what I can tell, optional. There's just like ridiculous amounts of optional content and I plan on doing all of it if I can unless there's missable content which I might miss which I actually think I might have missed some stuff already uh based on some of the events that took place in my playthrough but let's just say that I feel like each playthrough is going to be very unique because the game does lend itself uh to multiple I th at least I think again this is just based on 20 hours I think the game is going to lend itself to multiple playthroughs but at the same time I feel like people might might almost have to take a break in between playthroughs because you're going to be spending so much time in the same character. Like, for instance, when you go to a Dark Souls, right, you you can play that same character for, like, let's say, if, if you're just, like, being real casual about it, it, it maybe it's your first time, you're going to spend, like, 30 to 40 hours with one character and then pop off, play another character, now you know better, you can probably do, like, 15 hours, finish the game, something like that, 20 hours. And as you get better and better, if you, if you want to go into speedrun territory, you're looking at, like, you know, single digits. But ultimately, you know, you want to do different characters, do different builds and stuff like that. And considering the amount of hours that it is going to be required if someone wants to really do completionism in Elden Ring. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's it's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. I can tell you guys, it's a long game. It's a long game, but it's a good game. Because, like, it's a game that every single time that I'm sitting down to do another recording, I'm excited to see what happens next. Right? Because it could be one of those games where it's like, it's long and you're just like, oh, okay, here I go again. Let's go. That's the same old thing, whatever. But it's like, no, every single time that I sit down, I'm excited. And I feel like in, you know, not every single session that I've done of playing the game, like something jaw-dropping happens. But in most of the sessions that I've recorded, I feel like there's always at least one event that happens that's like, I'm like, oh, what? You know, or maybe I find something that I really would want. Like maybe I find like a weapon that I really would like or something like that, like, I feel like every single uh, play session, there's been a moment like that, which is cool because it keeps things fresh and it keeps me wanting to come back and play more and more and more. And I'm telling guys right now, I'm going to be really taking my time with this, uh, which is it, in a way it's a good thing because there's not a whole lot really happening in the Monster Hunter realm and there's not really a whole lot happening in other content that I really want to work on. So Elden Ring is going to be something that I'm going to be devoting a lot of time to, and that makes me very, very happy. Now, one of my favorite aspects still is 
the Ashes of War, but I should mention that I haven't found nearly as much as I had found in the network test. Because like in the network test, they front load you a lot, uh, a lot of Ashes of War, which made me think about like, oh, there's going to be tons and tons and tons of these. Now that I'm actually playing the game, I'm like, okay, so there's not going to be as many of these, which is not surprising. I mean, there's still a ton. Don't get me wrong. There's still like tons and tons, and I've already seen uh, some of them that I had not seen in the network test, and I haven't even found all of the ones that we see in the network test. But it, it's like, you know, initially when you play the network, it's like, dude, there's going to be like hundreds of these. And now I'm looking at it, and I'm like, nah, probably not hundreds, considering how many I've found so far. Probably not hundreds. But probably still quite a few, but I, again, I could be wrong. I... I don't actually know, because, like I said, 20 hours, there's still plenty of things to look at. Uh, when it comes to spell casting, I can't really tell you much, because I am playing a strength build. So I'm focusing everything on uh, strength. I found a lot, I mean, I found like three or four spells, but I've seen vendors that sell tons of spells and incantations, and some interesting ones as well. Like, there's a, a particular character, the one that you guys are watching uh, in the gameplay of this uh of this particular uh, video, I like that archetype, which is like um, kind of like a shady uh, faith type character, which is like some kind of an assassin type dude that they uses faith spells. And I'm just like, this, this is a very interesting backstory for a character, even though that's not the one I'm playing. I'm playing the uh, the hero because I'm gonna be wielding axes and hammers and. So happy that this game includes a hammer that I friggin' love. That's been, oh my god. Um, suffice it to say that when it comes to gameplay, it's just been an absolute blast. I'm enjoying it. That, that's not to say the game is perfect. Uh, like I said, for some people, they're going to be like, oh, this is just like Dark Souls. It's not just Dark Souls. And anyone who says that I feel is being disingenuous. There's much more here than just Dark Souls. The, the simple fact that they add an open world element to it changes so many things. And I'm still not 100% that all of those things are for the better, though, because uh, I don't know, like one of the dungeons that I've done, one of the more medium-sized dungeons, which is weird because you, you see all those small dungeons that I've showed you guys in Network Test, and there was a dungeon that I did which was basically a castle. But it was not Stormville. It was like a different castle. And... Um, it was not as big as Stormvale, but it was much bigger than like the smaller dungeons. And when I got to the final boss of that area, I just destroyed it. Like it wasn't even remotely challenged. And I was like, huh. Okay. And I think that that could have been caused due to the fact that I was just like out in the open world exploring and doing smaller dungeons and whatnot, that I might have overleveled that content. But you know, that's what New Game Plus is for, you know, bringing you more challenge stuff. We'll see how they scale that stuff up and we'll see how all of this works out because I'm actually considering potentially just like keep this character going for a long and longer and longer period of time. Uh, I've heard from uh, people that are further ahead in the game than me um, that there is a respec system that I still haven't found. Uh, so that could be something that I'm just like, oh, maybe I'll change my build around. Maybe I'll add some faith to it. Maybe I'll add some spells. Maybe I'll add something different. Maybe I'll respect something so that I can use a different type of weapon. But uh, so far, the weapon variety has been very much to my taste, which usually in Souls games is like, okay, here's a bunch of swords, here's a bunch of katanas, here's a bunch of like... This time, I'm like, oh, wow, there's, there's like three different... <laughs> okay, look, I'm, I'm going to give you guys just like one of the weapons that I found because it's so hilarious it's a boat anchor i i found a boat anchor <laughs> that you can use as a weapon and i was just like dude this is like one of the best things ever i haven't i haven't actually been using it because i'm using like a more traditional axe but i loved it and it was like i feel like they've gotten really creative with some of these weapons because like this boat anchor basically has the move set of a great axe but it deals piercing damage because it's a boat anchor <laughs> i don't know dude that there, there's a lot of things that just, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know how to say it. I'm just really having a blast just discovering uh, all the things the game has to offer. And maybe that will wane over time as the honeymoon uh, period uh, comes down, which is why I told you this is not a full-on review. I need way more time with the game and I don't want to rush it. I want to savor it like fine wine, which is why this is the best that I can do for you right now. And you can watch the gameplay that's going to be hitting the channel. Uh, the first couple of episodes, by the way, um, I'm, I'm not done. There's a couple more things that I want to talk about. But I just wanted to tell you guys also that the first couple of episodes 
This is going to be stuff that you've already seen in the network test. So if you've seen the network test, you can watch the first couple of episodes. It's not really going to be that spoilery. But uh, I want to touch up on visuals and animation because I know that this, again, one of those points of contention. A lot of people are concerned about the reusage of animations. And like I said, I don't think that this is a problem for me because it's like if the animations were bad, them reusing animations would be something that would bother me. But the animations are good. The animations were good in previous Souls games. I don't see a need to them for them to like, oh, let's just redo this animation. Why? Because we should do a different animation. Is like I don't I don't think that's a problem. But for some people, I realize that is a problem. There are several animations that you will probably have seen in Souls games, but the combat itself uh, will have different move sets for the weapons that you haven't seen before. Like for instance, uh, you know you can spam R1 until you run out of stamina in Souls games. In this game. Like, you spam R1 until you reach the final hit of your weapon, which is usually, I think, like the fourth attack. And the fourth attack will be, like, a slightly different animation than in the case. This is the ending of your combo. Maybe there will even be items that affect the damage of the ending of your combo to give you guys an idea of how things can work out. There's also items that affect, like, other different aspects of things. Like, you know, I, I can actually give you, like, a couple of them without getting into too much spoilers. Or there, there's a charm, for instance, that will make it easier for you to break guard. Break an enemy's guard. So there's stuff like that. And there is just straight up a charm that does what I what I said earlier, which is like your fourth hit just deals more damage, right? So for the people that are bothered about some of the animations being reused, maybe this game ain't for you. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm loving the game. I'm enjoying my time with it. But, and I think that the animations are good. But, you know, in terms of visuals themselves, like visual fidelity, I think the game looks good. It's definitely the best looking Souls game that I've ever played the best looking game that I've played from from software but it's not really going to blow your mind right like I don't think that the, the visuals are like super mind blowing next gen <laughs> like all fireworks and super mega particle effects and all of that it's not really about that when it comes to Souls games I feel like it's more about the gameplay experience but yeah I still think the visuals are pretty good uh, there are some issues currently with the, the build that I'm playing when it comes to like performance and stuff but then again i'm also playing at 4k max settings the thing is it runs fine on most situations then every now and then there's like some beefy frame drops because something happens that i still haven't been able to identify which setting uh, is causing that particular frame drop to happen and i've heard from other people that they're experiencing similar things uh from time to time with some frame drops here and there so the PC version, um, I'm hoping that maybe a day one patch can uh, do better by this. I'll try to report on it as uh, you know the game gets patched because right now we're, we're all in the uh, like the the media branch, the, the early access version of the of the game still. Uh, so we don't have any like day one patches applied or anything. But again, like I said, I'll report on that. Another really good thing about the visuals that I like is that I enjoy the fact that the world is more colorful than what we've seen in previous Souls games. And I know that for some people this is a, you know, that a lot of people just want darker, darker, more dark. And it's like, I ain't about that. So whatever bits of splashes of color they put into the world, I greatly appreciate that. And seeing the, the sunrise in, um, in the lands between feels freaking amazing. I really, really like it. Um... Again, with the visuals, there's a huge sense of scale uh, with the game that I've mentioned repeatedly, which is freaking fantastic. Uh, I've, I've mentioned before, like, um, whenever I talk about scale, I like to talk about Xenoblade Chronicles X, which is a fantastic title at representing scale. And it's too soon to tell, but I feel like Elden Ring might be rivaling that a little bit right now, which is impressive. Not a lot of games achieve that type of level of scale, particularly in an open world game, that really just gives you a sense of, oh, this this is like a massive friggin' world. Look at just the sheer size of this structure. This is wild. And Elden Ring does a fantastic job of keeping you immersed while showing you stuff like that, which is a good thing. Uh, furthermore, I guess I can talk a little bit about sound. Sounds good. Uh, pretty much everything from swings to hitting enemies to, you know, it's, it's the usual sounds that if you've played a souls game you've heard a lot of these before there's some new ones one of the things that i will call out when it comes to sound is the um the little treasure scarabs or treasure beetles whatever they're called i like the fact that you can usually hear them long before you see them so that you know oh one of them is here i gotta pay attention so that it doesn't run away 
this is kind of the same way that you could usually tell about like crystal lizards and stuff like that. But um, yeah, basically the overall conclusion is I'm having an absolute blast. Uh, if you want like a full on review, for me, that is going to take a long time. Um, I mean, I haven't even had the game for that long to begin with. So, you know, I'm also limited in, in that aspect of it. And I'm also limited in the fact that I'm recording every time that I'm playing. So uh, it's not like I can just go home and play for like 10 hours straight and then bring as a review. So like I said, it's going to take a while, but hopefully this uh, gives you an idea of how I feel about the game up until this point. If anything changes along the way, I'll be sure to update you in a video or something, but right now it's just like smooth sailing. I'm having a blast. Keep in mind, PC version. I haven't touched the PlayStation 5 version yet uh, because, you know, I was only given access to the PC version and obviously I haven't played the Xbox version either. So this is just my thoughts on the PC version up until this point. Once I get access to more versions, then I will tell you guys more details about things that you might need to know. But for now, that's going to be it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this gave you an idea of how I feel about the game. And um, hopefully you're looking forward to watching my blind playthrough because I know the algorithm is going com to completely pummel me into the ground once I start uploading those. But, uh, you know, at least I'll go down swinging. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out.